kidneys. Damn time machine. I can't see a thing. Ah, that's better. What a beautiful day. Only a mild smattering of pigeons. Wouldn't look in there if I were you. Gavin must have left this rag out when he cleaned the photomographs. My Stanley steam lift. It makes traversing these cumbersome stairs a breeze. Seems to be a little stuck. <laughs> Blasty pile of rubbish. Where's my grandfather had a massive clock. Sir, is that you? Have you locked yourself in again, Gavin? Good morning, Mr. Fidel. Ah, there you are, Gavin. Where have you been? I was just, uh, deflating the Zeppelin, sir. I did not hear you walk down the stairs. Did you sleep well? Unfortunately not. It was a restless night, embothered by some strange dreams. My mind craves adventure. And without it, I fear I'm going quite mad. It's been two months without the slightest expedition. I'm becoming a little worried. What shall I do if I can't do my adventurings? Do not fear, sir. There is an old Peruvian saying. The forest is full of trees. Hmm. Quite... Wait, sir. You have not read your telegrams. Gigantic diamond? Sounds legitimate. Mm. I've been telegram spammed. <gasps> A message from Lord Arthwipe. Maybe he has news of an adventure. My dear mother, I owe her so much. Approximately £12,000 and a new gazebo. I shot my first yeti with that. Nearly lost my moustache in the process. Just some artefacts I picked up on my travels. My prized possession, an actual Tyrannosaur arm bone. A rather cheeky specimen. My turtle lamp. I'm writing my autobiography. A fiddle here and there. It is a more scraping read, sir. Oh, there you are, Bertram. Good morning, dear heart. It's nearly ten o'clock. I hardly call that morning. Haven't you got some adventuring to do? Alas, no. I have been looking... But I just can't find any expeditions worthy of my talents. 
Well, if you don't find something to adventure soon, I shall require that you find yourself a proper job. It's not that easy, my dear. You can't merely go outside and find yourself in a world full of unimaginable creatures. Adventure strikes when you least expect it. That as may be, I am accustomed to certain standards, Bertram. Being respectable costs money. Your mother agrees with me. She has mentioned there is a very respectable position at Mr. Dullsworth Soap Company providing telegrammatic advertising. The hours are long and arduous and the work repetitive and uninteresting. But you would receive a steady income, Bertram. My, my, is that the, um, I really must be off. <gasps> Bertram, <gasps> caviar doesn't just grow on trees. There, there, my dear. Don't cry. I'm sure there is an adventure just around the corner. I'm sorry, dear. You have until the end of the day to find suitable employment, or I am calling Mr. Dullsworth. Oh, well... Of course, my dear. Thank you, Bertram. Now, could you do me a favor? Um, well, I do have an appointment with Lord Arthwipe. For goodness sake, Bertram. I don't like you running errands for a dreadful man. It's just not becoming. Now then, can you take Foofy to the groomery for me? It's on Groom Street. I, uh, yes, of course, my dear. This is all very tiresome. I'm going to lie down. Bother some creature. Basket! Foofy! Foofy! Basket! What's the matter, Foofy? We'll keep him quiet for a while. It's lucky I have such spacious pockets. May I remind you that I possess immense strength, Mr. Fidel. Yes? Be a good fellow and move this cabinet, Gavin. Certainly, sir. Up to my knees in adventure in Africa just before I discovered the world's shortest river. Back in 1878, I managed to hunt down and kill the majestic rhino bird. <laughs> it's bad luck to use an umbrella indoors, don't you know? like a key, literally. What a lovely day for a stroll. Why, there's hardly any drizzle at all. Hmm, there is a storm coming. <laughs> what a terrible little man. He never said sorry. Oh, I see. He's bemuddled our bags up. He's got Foofy. Rude man. Excuse me. Rude man. Excuse me. Rude man. Hey, uh, what are you going, mister? Come on, Gavin, do keep up. This way, Gavin. This 
we get him? I see. I think we are getting on him. We're catching him. Are you okay, sir? What's this? It appears to be a nose. He must have dropped it in his haste to scurry off into the shadows. Evening, Barbara! Did you see a suspicious, shadowy little man run by, Pachon? I wish to return his bag. No, sir, I have not. You should ask that Sherlock Holmes, sir. He's a proper detective. You can find him in the Adventurers Club. Yes, yes, I know who he is. I'm quite the detective myself, you know. Blessed with a keen eye for detail. Let me have a look at that. Oh, look, a freak show is in town. The Adventurers Club, the finest collection of explorators in the world. Hmm, upgrade your moustache. A shilling? I'm not paying that. Your Majesty. Emelina Snoopsworth, reporter for the Evening Burble. Good day. Bertram Fiddle, leading Victorian explorator. Perhaps you've heard of me. Um, yes. Yes, of course I have. Maybe you can help me. Are you a member of the Adventurers Club? Indeed I am, madam. How may I be of service? I'm investigating the ghastly murderings that have been happening, and I want to interview Sherlock Holmes, but he's a very difficult man to get hold of. They won't even allow women in this ridiculous, outdated backwards club. It's 1884, not the Middle Ages. Quite. As it happens, I'm going to see Sherlock Holmes now. Perhaps I can ask for you. That would be most helpful. If you learn anything about the recent murderings, do tell. Oh, good evening, Mr. Fiddles. The usual. Yes, please. One can never have enough tea. I'm afraid, Mr. Fiddle, you are not permitted into the gold members area. It is for A-list adventurers only. I've never been so outraged. I need to see Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes has asked expressly not to be disturbed as he is working on the dreadful case of Jeff the Murderer. I have my own case I want to talk to him about. I'm afraid, Mr. Fiddle, you are not permitted into the gold members area. Ooh, porcupine canopies. A prickly aperitif. Hardwood, how are you? Fiddle, long time no see. Yes, it's been a while. Just telling Melvis here about my latest adventure. Four months in Patagonia. South America. Discovered a lost world. It was well splendid. Yeah. Found this thing up a crevice. Crevasse. So thought I'd bring it back. Don't even know what it is. Got a few ideas. <laughs> Crazy. Prehistoric. Time to cause a flap. 
Fly, little creature, fly! Right here, middle! You buffoon! What have you done? You am lost! Come back! Come back to me! Oh. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's the spot. Sir Clive Odwing, the world-renowned ornithologist's private chamber. He's left his door ajar. Do you mind? Oh, uh, terribly sorry. The door was open and I... Uh, 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 hmm. uh, no. Ooh, down a bit, Sandra. Do I just stand there gawking, man? I'm sure it's nothing I've seen before. Ooh, you've got cold hands. Pick those leaves up from a fellow in Indies. Strong stuff. Good for relaxing. Help yourself. Um, I'll be off then. Be a good fellow and shut the door on your way out. Ah, Sherlock's private room. No doubt where he works on his important cases. Ha! I win again, Watson. You really are a dolt. I'm sorry, Holmes. I'm trying. It's just I don't really understand the rules of this game. All your games. Ah, oh, fiddle. What brings you here? Come to bore us with more tales of one of your piffling adventures, have you? No! I'm on a mission to return this bag unto its rightful owner. And who is its rightful owner? That I have yet to ascertain. There are absolutely no clues whatsoever. Have you tried looking in the bag? Ah, I never thought of that. <laughs> the features have been sliced off expertly with a sharp instrument by someone with skill and panache. Aha, <laughs> this looks like the work of London's most elusive serial killer, Jeff the Murderer. Ha! Good luck finding him, Fiddle. The whole of Scotland Yard hasn't been able to track him down in decades. I rather fancy my luck, Holmes. He can't be that far away. <laughs> you, Fiddle, you couldn't find your own tolly water in the toilet. Ha, ha, ha. I'll wager you wager you don't even come close. <laughs> if you can find Jeff the murderer, I'll wear a woman's dress and dance the trifling gallop round the streets of Lambeth. I accept, good sir. Nice to see you, Bertram. Shush, Watson. But the... That's not to be sniffed at. I might have an idea of how to find him, Fiddle. Have you ever heard... Not a word more, Watson. Watson is trying to tell me something. Your teacup is empty. Eh, what a brilliant detective you seem to be. Now make yourself useful and bring me another one. Oh my, that's a potent concoction. Try this one. It's a special blend. Give me that. Being the world's greatest crook thwarter is thirsty work. What, what, what is in this tea? I feel somewhat strange. What have you done? Is he dead? Don't worry, Watson. He's just sleeping. Oh, uh, I mean, good. Now, was there something you wanted to tell me? I know you think me silly for saying, but you need to ask the spirits for help. Spirits? I am a man of science. I don't believe in such perfidy. No, Bertram. They exist. I have seen them with my own two eyes. Sherlock says it was a seagull. But I know it was the spirit of the recently departed. The spirit sometimes lingers on in this realm, especially if it has been wronged. You should help her find peace 
by collecting the missing body parts. Try and find Count Falchmuckle. He's a gentleman with an acquired taste, but he does have certain connections. I'm sure he can help you on your quest. Been there, been there, been there, been th Oh, that's new. Anything yet? Well, madam, I spoke to Sherlock, but he's somewhat occupied right now. Typical. The conceited buffoon. However, I am able to inform you that I, Bertram Fiddle, am now on the case of Jeff the Murderer. And I shan't rest until I find him. Oh, my goodness, this is wonderful news. Our readers will be delighted to hear about this. You can tell your readers not to fear. I can be quite sleuthful when I need to be. Here's my news blimp now. I must be off, Mr. Fiddle, but I'm sure I shall see you again.